been flawless. They have executed everything perfectly, including the draft. We're about to go into game number four. Major decisions are about to be made here. It's Blacklist on the play. Echo answering back. There goes the Cho. There goes the Kaja. Echo bans out the Wan Wan and the Estes. Man, last game, game number three. In the draft, Blacklist International were able to secure second pick. That was the most, well, th that side is the most success they found Over in M4. 72% 70 win rate on the red side as the second pick. Echo just shattered that, and now they're taking back the second pick away from Blacklist International, who are forced, again, to their first pick. It's not a bad win rate for them. It's still, still like 60%. But Echo, this is where they shine in the first pick, and in the second pick here, we're gonna see Blacklist securing the Yeeve. Echo, what do they respond with? They respond with Glue and Fredrin. Deja vu. Yeah, right now, whatever Blacklist brings go. out, this has to be their absolute best yeah. draft because right now Echo is feeling pretty good, but for Blacklist, this is a best of one. And Echo continues the trend, not allowing the Queen to use the Estes. They managed to get the Diggy, but if you see a Diggy, what do you have to do? You have to kill the Diggy over and over and over and over again. So now, I kind of feel like Echo, they completely expected this. So even though right now, Blacklist, it seems like they're getting their heroes. I have this feeling in the back of my head, Echo is actually drafting for Blacklist. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with you. Given how fast they're responding, given how in a split second, Fredrin, Glue. But this time around, it seems like they're more deliberate. They have to consider. But just as quickly, all right, here's the Hilda. Last time we saw the Hilda, played by Echo, wasn't so good. What might make the difference here, Mirko? Well, I think what makes the difference here, or what can make the difference here, is Echo banning out the gold laners, right? They've already gotten the 1-1 one, one and the carry out. This is their opportunity. They have the first pick in the second phase. This is the time to ban out the gold lane, but instead, wow. they are still going, respecting Edward. So, I think... Right now, they're, th they're thinking, hey, we've gone rid of the one one and the carry. These two pose the most threat towards our composition. Might as well set up for Benny, right? Give him more room to play by banning out the backline threat. People who can dive, like the Lapu, maybe even the Yudong next. Yeah, looking at Lapu -Lapu getting banned, this does show that Echo, perhaps they want to go for the Brody again because not a lot of mobility, so perhaps could be punished by, like you said, yeah. like a Lalapu, like a, like a Yuzong. And the fact that they're picking up the Hilda, the only thing that I can think about, because usually you pick the Hilda to fight against Assassins, but you can also fight against a lane going up with, with the Diggy because, sure, usually people take supports, healing supports, kind of like a Rafaela just to top yourself off, but you're still giving free stats over to Diggy. With a Hilda, you could Your dive early. So you're kind of like countering the Diggy by just putting a lot of pressure if you want to throw bombs, I'm going to drop my hammer, my axe onto you. Yeah. And I've never seen a bird liking an axe to a head, to the head. I've most, never seen anyone. Yeah, most living things yeah. don't like axes to their head. Real quick, still doesn't have a hero here for himself what? in the draft. Let's talk about Benny Cutie. For me, the thing I changed the most is my mindset. It was like I was holding back. Maybe because I'm scared other people will blame me. But this oh, M-Series, yeah. it's like I'm all out no matter what happens. That's it. So that's what is just powering Benny Cutie here in the M Series at the Grand Final stage is he doesn't care about what the yeah. others think anymore. It's just for him and for his team. As a veteran, he's got nothing to lose now, right? He is in the biggest Your stage. And they pick up the Lunox. And this is such a brilliant Lunox pick because it's a flex pick. Yeah, it's still flexible. They saved the mid lane and the gold lane is the last pick. And now you really see it, right? The Barats was picked up. The Lunox was left open. They went for the Harith. And this flex pick is going to cause havoc for Blacklist International. I'm going to call it out. Echo, the moment they win the jungle fight, I'm going to say it's over. Because they can establish jungle control with the Frederick, with the Glue, with the Hilda. Yeah. And then the damage is there. They already have the Lunox. With this kind of draft, you can spiral out of control. You can build a hurricane. And it's, and it's a hurricane that's very difficult to stop. Yeah, this is uh, very similar to uh, what they did already in this series alone. So the answer from Blacks International seems to be the Beatrix and the Benedetta. Some classic picks from Blacklist International here. The choice is And I was wondering, how are they gonna solve the range 
difficulty and difference between the Eve and whatever mid laner is going to be here for Echo. And here's how they do it with Sanji's savior. It's not enough that you have very tanky front lines. Now you got a mystic field to think about. Exactly. Blacklist, they want to they want to clump up together. They're going to get punished if they do. And like I said, this just further solidifies. If you're going to fight around in the jungle, the jungle is very tight spaces. There's no, not many places that you can maneuver around the mystic field. All they got to do right now for Echo, crush two, just, just, just take two turrets in any lane and then establish jungle control. This is a very scary draft. Xavier is one of the heroes that forces the time journey out the best. Yeah. The Mystic Fields, getting two or three or even just one Pryo member will force that time journey to come out and the damage as well from the Hilda early on. That's what they want to do. It's low cost efficiency at the bane of your opponent's lineup. Will Blacklist bounce back because this is the last chance? Echo are forcing them into match point. Game number four in this best of seven for the World Championship. Right now, Echo, they're super dominant. Who would have thought that the grand finals of M4 will be looking like this? Echo and Blacklist International. I'm looking at Yaoi, I'm looking at this Hilda. It looks like Yaoi will just chase absolutely anyone who wants to pressure Haji, and again, Remember the game plan. Don't diverge too far. Haji Oheb, don't let them be free. That's all you gotta do. And guess what? Winning lane for Sanford too. Edward gonna have a tough time in the mid lane. Haji should be able to win this out in a 1v1. But it's never the case with the Hilda roaming across the map. The Mystic Field is doing work already. Yep, and it's not like there's much of a punish from Blacklist. Not quite yet. So we're waiting for them to hit that power spike, put items on Oheb, maybe have Edward win a 1v1 or at least a pickoff before the last turtle spawns. And it's that weird timing that Blackness have to play around as Echo makes their presence known up top before making for turtle 30 seconds from now. Looking at the situation again, Yaoi not diverging. Just go to the mid, go to the goal lane. Let's try to create space. Right now, Yaoi is getting caught. Can Blacklist even execute a kill? I don't think so. No one can catch them and they don't have the damage. No kill pressure. Not, not enough, right? Early on. Oheb is kind of a safe lane on the Beatrix. Venus can have a, some sort of pick potential with a reverse time, but then the case is you're trying to catch uh, Hilda with yep. Sprint. I don't think you're going to be able to do that early on. That is a uh, practice in uh, futility, if I've ever seen one. Now, Yaoi pushing away Oheb. And the thing is, this was a 3v2 situation about a minute ago. And what this allows is for Echo to have a priority with the turtle. They're already pushing for it. Carl TZ and Sanford. And that range advantage is already doing work right now. Carl TZ on Lord. Edward trying to steal it, but with no retribution. Carl TZ is just going to be able to poke Edward down, securing the first objective of the game with no trades on the board. And look at Sanford, already oppressing. Oh no, this is a disaster oh! for Blackwood Internationals. Wise is going to be able to pop the death of his welcome. But now it's Sanford who's on the split split. It's the first blood over to Echo. Haji looking for some compensation, but that's going to be Yaoi who tries Wait. to help him out. The split split's there for Sanford. He gets out. Venus trying to find that kill off. Reverse time, bringing it back. But Sanford's still alive. Has the slam slam and the fast pass and Haji gets picked off. Sanford is still alive and Yaoi is beating Oheb oh. with a dotting light as well. Oheb forced the flicker out. The time journey comes in. 1,000 gold lead in three minutes, Yaoi. Oh my goodness. Close call. Yeah, right now again, look at the checkmate being set up. Echo, who are they pressuring? Haji as well as Oheb. And now, just for addition, Wise as well. They're push, they're pushing around mid. They're pushing around the goal lane. And now it looks like they could have a possibility of controlling the jungle. We predicted it. And now Echo, they're slowly but surely making it happen. LaFell, up top. Benny Cutie has chipped away at almost a whole shield. Three minutes mage. in, three minutes in, and they're about 2k ahead. What do you have to say, LaFell? You know, that's a mage. You're thinking of probably like, hey, that's what Bruno does to a turret. That's what Brody does to a turret. Hey, Lunox is here too. Ooh. It's a good snipe by Oheb, getting a trade back. Wise now looking for it, but that's the Lunox right there. The brilliance is always ready to get you out of these tough situations. Oh, look at Carl Tizi, the angle. Spots out V, forces out a time's journey. Oh! 
That's it. That's the time journey. Bait it out. Wise for the death of this welcome. On to Call Teezy, but the damage will not be enough just yet. Call Teezy can low. Has the appraiser's wrath. Gets back Whoa! to full HP. The dotting line almost sniping Venus. But guess who's here? Sanford's looking for the dive. Now, not going to be able to find it just yet. Pops the split split. Edward trying to poke him down as Echo will disengage. Four minutes in, Echo's already cornered Black. Forced them with an early Ube just to protect Oheb. Yeah, and again, look at what they're doing. They're sacrificing the EXP lane, going all the way to the goal lane, trying to win that lane. And now, because they're forced to be in the long lane. Oh, hem, oh, hem, oh, hem. Oh, my goodness. Oh, hem is going to be killed. Solo, no, has help from Benny a bit. Venus finds a trade, but it's a gold laner for a roamer. Dude, right now, Echo, Johnny they're Lowe. really setting it up. There's no way for Blacklist to hide. Echo is not just forcing Blacklist to back away. They're forcing them to be in a position of getting attacked from all sides of the map. Five minutes in, they're a thousand gold ahead of the LaFell threshold. Is this the point wherein you say it's going to be difficult to come back? Because the early game clearly went over the Echo. They got one turret. What they got to do? Grab another one, and Betty Cutie even secures the gold crab. But after this, you got to control the jungle. After you do that, it's going to be crazy. Because even looking at Haji right now, already completing the Clock of Destiny, he could have completed Enchanted Talisman first, but he's like, you know what? I'm just going to go for damage. The uncharacteristic miss, too, from Oheb signals something that's even worse than just losing. Getting tilted in the game, in the final game, that can be the final game, right? How is their mental looking? I'm hoping that that's not the case. Again, world champions are not built without pressure, without turmoil, without struggle. And this is a struggle of all struggles. How do you come back from a six minute game? 3K behind Haji, trying to space out. So the wise can come back. Oh, then is welcome. But the Mystic Field now, Sanji with the dawning light as well. Now popping that same mobility. Call oh. TZ jumps in and the killing spree picked up by Sanji. Now in the top lane, Edward finding a trade onto the objective now as he goes in onto the mini waves. Benny is still there. Edward now gonna be able to dash away. Benny flickering forward. Eye for an eye by Edward getting out to safety as he finds a trade finally for Blacklist. Agent Zero gets away with his life. Close call from Sanji. Yeah, right now Sanji, 3-0-0 zero is zero. just oh, gonna get stronger man. and now Oheb getting pressured. Again, Sanford flickering forward. Oheb forced to flicker out with the time journey as well. Oh! Sanford still going through with you. He's got a turret here too. Under the face turret. They find the kill onto Venus. Yaoi gets traded back. Sanford as well. No, this one split. There you go. You can't get out of that one. There's no way. So Blacklist found a little bit of redemption on the map. Two kills. They're going to protect their mid lane here, but they concede the last hurdle over to Echo. Still maintaining a 3k gold lead. Right now, Blacklist, they're finding ways. They're finding opportunities. Right now, my Venus gets attacked, and he wow. almost got chunked down. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Anyway. There you go. That's the dawning light connecting. Edward going to be taken low as Yaoi jumps in again. Onto Edward right now. As he's looking for the damage, he finds it with the power of wildness. Oheb with the reviewer's passion to clear out the waves. It feels like Blacklist are trying their best to find a trade, but it's always going to Echo's favor. Allow me to hypothesize. LaFell, what's gonna happen if Blacklist fights Echo here, mano y mano every single time? If they try to trade, what happens? Will that eventually lead to a comeback or will that be punished by Echo? Because again, 3K, that's about a main item for a core. Not yet, because Edward is the one dealing, dealing the most amount of damage. Oheb, not just yet, because Carl TZ will always be in front. You can't shred that, because right now, he only has the Blade of Despair. It's not enough. They can fight if they want, but the damage, they have to understand, is on Edward, not on Oheb. Just look at it again, right? I mean, when Sanford can do that, dive into the base turret, sure, he was taken down, but the fact that he still was able to find a trade it shows how dominant this game has been for Echo. If Blacklist want to come back, they're going to have to wait for those power spikes to hit. And even then, in the late stage, remember, Echo has a Lunox. They yeah. have a Xavier. And, and it's, a, it's a delicate dance that Echo have to go with here. Much like a Lord dance that goes for a minute and a half, Echo have to temper between aggression and discipline. They force out a flicker against Sanford down bottom. They push a main artery in mid. Blacklist here employing an Ube. They're letting Agent Zero 
force out something from Echo. For me, it's not doom and gloom for Blacklist because now they're moving around the map. They're making sure they're not getting caught. They're making sure that they don't do mistakes because they will eventually have enough damage. We've seen time and time again, this Beatrix will shred everyone down. Right now, Edward, tr he's trying to slow down the Lord, but I feel like they should let this go. It's just a Luminous. It's not that big of a deal. But if they let this go, what can they fight for, right? They're going for trades right now. You can already see it, but Sanji's going to be able to clear out the mid lane. They traded for a tier one down below. For, a, for the first Lord of the game, though, I think Echo are more than happy. As a byproduct, the waves are going to be much stronger, right? Empowered yep. minions. Lord's going to march on through top. Lord is set to spawn in the upper half of the map. And this does open up something for Agent Zero and Oheb to push down bottom. But Echo still 4k ahead. And now they're also going to push up top. Oh no, I see what's happening here. They're setting up again for the potential split. Oh man. Again, there's so many things to worry about. If you're Blacklist International, right? Not only just the five members, but how they're playing. Not just going for team fights, not just for picks, not just for sieges, but also for back doors, for split pushes. Oheb with one dawning light gets chunked to half HP. With Lord marching down on the top side, it is going to be acting as a distraction. Asanji is going to be taken to a quarter of his HP. Ooh. Lord taken down as Blacklist International are able to micromanage the waves for now. Mid lane to be pushing in. Benny with a chaos. Oh my goodness, that damage on the Venus is insane. Sanford zoning the other members away, but so far it's an amazing defense by Blacklist International. They force Agent Zero to come back home. He can't force the issue down bottom in the inhibitor. Lothel, what's the answer here? Lord coming in about two minutes. Again, you just got to wait it out because right now what Blacklist did, they got a lot from the Lord coming in from Echo actually because they see, all right, you're, you're going for this objective. They managed to get two turrets down in bottom. That's a lot of gold steel, but oh, have here with like below 50% HP. This is pretty bad. They gotta wait for Echo to overextend and hopefully they can fight back. That's a small dinosaur. Why is not tanky enough? The time journey buys him oh. time, but it only cancels out CC, not damage. Carl DZ with the appraiser's wrath. Haji trying to fight desperately, but the split split connects and it takes him down. Yowie in the midst of the base finds Oheb low. Edward gets a trade. I'm in the top lane. Sanford recalling. Echo looking for the siege into the base turret. Blacklist still able to defend. Two for one, and Agent Zero was not able to do anything up top. Oheb didn't fall, so there's some silver lining here. Signs of life from Blacklist International. Yeah, because again, the name of the game is the turrets right now. Edward going for Sanji, and he's doing a lot wow. of damage. And this is why I say, if Blacklist, they're pressured, we gotta look at Edward. He is the one that could potentially give them this game victory. If Blacklist can pull Akko around, come here, take the bait. My name is Haji, my name is Oheb. Don't you want me? Let, Ak let Edward have the space to try and potentially push, get some gold, get the items, and then try to win the team fight. And this Brute Force Breastplate in Edward's arsenal is gonna be super key. He's gonna be super important in maybe quelling Two or three members of Echo, if Echo do send two or three members. I think Echo is just playing their game here. 6k ahead, making a jockey for this Luminous Lord. If they do take this Lord for free, which is likely, oh lord, that, that's very quick. They're definitely going to get at least one inhibitor. That was like, what, as fast as securing a buff? That was even faster, Even honestly. faster than securing faster. a buff, yeah. Oh my goodness, Black Wizard National, oh, Edward gets spotted out, that cancels the recall. Edward running for the hills right now, pops in the final blow. Gonna be able to dash for a bit longer. Sanford looking for the chase, not able to find it. Agent Zero survives, but still, it's Echo who utilizes that to set up in the bottom lane. Looking at this, I, I again, like, I'm still pulling out hope oh. because Blacklist can do a lot, but as we said before the game, Echo, they're scaling. It's not like they're gonna, you know, drop Fall in off. terms of damage. They're just getting stronger and stronger. And now Wise oh. getting pressured. The Mystic Field locking him down. As Wise tries to get out, but Sanford flickers forward, baiting out a time journey. The mid lane base turn is gonna fall right now as that's gonna be the siege coming in. Sanji flickering out. Edward did not use the final blow. That was a prediction by Sanji that did not work out. But it's still Echo, who are marching, who are knocking on the base of Blacklist International. Bottom side, reverse time, bringing Sanford back, but Split Split gets him out of there right now. 
Edward still not popping the final blow just yet. Charging up his dashes. And still, it's Echo who are playing it so well. Disciplined. Top lane inhibitor at half health. Waves crashing in through bottom. They're waiting for a wave in the mid. Echo here might get punished. Look at Yaoi. That's the mortality popped in. Edward trying to split this side, but Yaoi gets out of the death and is welcome. Edward trying to find an opening, but will be caught in the Mystic Field. Immobilized and poked down. Echo now onto the purple buff. Two level lead for Carl Teasy against Wise. He takes it away and he walks out. Carl Teasy just ate a face full of Nibiru's passion and walks away from it. Does OM need any more items? I'm wondering if there's enough in the next two or three minutes because this Lord coming in, it's just Luminous, all right? Just a Luminous Lord, a minute from now. Looking at the items right now, Blade of Despair, Malefic Roar, as well as the Hunter Strike. In my personal opinion, this is enough. But now, how do you dish out the damage? Because you have enough damage necessary to take down Echo. Because looking at the lineup, the only one that you're going to have problems with is Sanford, as well as Carl Easy, because they do have the Blade Armor, and the Blade Armor does hurt going up against the Beatrix. So Beatrix is going to have a little bit of problem there, but the main problem is staying inside the fight. I kind of feel like at this point, maybe Oheb has to wait for every single item, including the Haas Claw, to stay alive, because the problem is not, not about dishing out the damage, it's about staying alive. And how do you stay alive against a lineup that finds angles and forces you to respond like this even without committing? And that's what 8K Gold buys you ahead of your opponent. Now, 15 minutes in, about five seconds away from this Lord. It's interesting to see that Blacklist, it seems like they're jockeying for position. Should they contest this? This one, I kind of feel like they got to go for a 4-1, but now why oh. is getting someone? Again, Oham's gonna be chunked low from across the map. Ooh. The snipe not connecting. Yaoi dodging away with the sprint. That's Edward jumping to the back line, but it's not enough damage to take Sanji down. He doesn't even pop the flicker. The Petrify was used already. A lot of resources spent. Sanford now jumping in. Dawning Light taking Venus to have a half HP. Why is it for the opening? Edward gonna be caught in the Mystic Field once again as he jumps out with Eye for an Eye. Venus taken low by Benny and Sanford, who's now on Wise. Bringing him back, immobilizing him. Sanford jumps in again! Oh. He finds it! Venus forced to run away. Haji standing his ground, but Carl Teasy jumps in. The flicker out to safety as Wise is even caught by the Mystic Field. Echo, look at him march down. Benny with damage, Appraiser's Brad connecting as well. Yaoi finding the kill onto Wise. Yaoi getting out. Sanford immobilizing him. Five members strong, two members down from Blacklist. Just three defenders for Blacks International. They still have Haji, Sanji pushing in. Look at Edward, four scout winner truncheon. The mortality bot as well. Edward gonna be stunned up, immobilized everything. He's not moving. Edward will fall. He buys the mortality in time, but he's gonna fall again to the damage coming through. The time journey saves him, but the appraiser's wrath takes the queen down. Haji locked out with a mystic field. The dawning light outranging the real world inflation. Sanford finds a double. Echo, they haven't just broken the code. They have shattered it. 4-0 for the Orcas. The age of the Orcas is now. Echo are your M4 world champions. Waning the game, getting the checkmate, setting everything up. Right now, Echo from the Philippines is your official M4 World Champions. These young men have worked their lives, committed, sacrificed so much, and now at the top of their game, on the world stage, they dare to be great. And now they can say they are. What a performance once again. Stunning, masterful, class. All the good words that you can use cannot describe how dominantly they were able to take down not just any team, the defending world champions, the Filipino MPL champions. And to date, we still don't have a back-to-back -back champion. History will still continue having different champions every single year. Echo dominating in war. The new era from the Philippines led by the best in the world, Carl, Carl Teasy. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been an honor to be at your service again and again and again. May we make history or a break records.
LaFell, any last words? The only words that I can say right now, this is, these five men, including their coaches, are the best in the world. Mirko? Best in the world. Echo from the Philippines, once more your world champions. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear from them on stage. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, your M4 world champion. Congratulations to Echo! Philippines, they are really loud and they are really proud. Now to award the champion, let's call the presenters of each award. To present the ring, we have Mr. Michael Yaya, UBS Gold Creative Director. To present the medal, we have Mr. Lucas Mao, Managing Director of Moon Dawn Esports, and Mr. Baba Frankie. Secretary General of Esports Federation of Indonesia. We would like to invite our VVIP to come to join us on the stage. Echo has done it. They are the world champion. They are the new kings of all the regions, the greatest of them all, the super team from the Philippines. Look how proud they are and how happy they are right now. They will be receiving lots of gifts, lots of fortune from this M4 World Championship. Echo, you may now receive your medals and your rings. Oh, the first one is the ring from UBS Gold. Benny Cutie! And also, the medal, Sanford! Cartesi! JP! Esports had to present the finals MVP awards with Mr. Michael Yaya. And of course, on this final, this grand final, 10 of the best player, but we have five players who play really well with four zero scores. And only one stands on top of them. Champions will also get a champion's tour by the Ministry of Tourism. And of course, our champions will get to choose the skin of their choice. Yes, after they fought really well, 
on this grand final. Everyone is really doing the best. But once again, only one stands on top of them all. We got the final MVP of M4. Now our partners in the media will take a photo with our champion. This is the moment for Eco Esports, Eco Philippines, Eco Philippines. A big hand for our champion. They dare to be great. They have shown the greatness. Echo! The representative from Philippines. And now, it is time to award the finals MVP. Who gonna get the title of the final MVP? The finals MVP goes to... Betty Cutie! Hurricane Betty has come to the world stage and have taken us by storm. He has proven that he is Legendary! Benny Cutie's first trophy, and he has won the biggest prize of them all the World Championship and the Finals MVP Award. Our friends from the media will now take the photo with our Finals MVP. And now, Echo, this is your moment. They want it now. They want to touch it. They want to live it up, Mara. At the count of three, take what is yours. One, two, two three. three. Your M4 World Champions. Echo! Congratulations, Echo Philippines! The strongest of all the regions, the strongest team of all. They're loud, they're proud. Echo Philippines. Everybody, when I say Echo loud, you say Echo, Echo proud. proud. Echo loud. Echo proud. Echo loud. Champion, first, Benny QD, ikaw ang naging finals MVP. You're the finals MVP, the greatest player of all. How do you feel right now? Ano, nararamdaman ko po sobrang saya. Tapos, ano, hindi, hindi ko po mamaliwanag eh. Gusto ko pong umiyak na ayaw lumabas. Kaya, ayun ko po sobrang overwhelming lang siguro sa akin lahat ng pumapasok sa, ano, sa, sa utak ko, sa puso ko. <laughs> he is so overwhelmed. He is so happy. He feels like crying, but he can't express his emotions right now. He is speechless. Carl TZ, the only t the only player who has done this two times. World champion. Whoa, two How times. How do you feel? Parehas lang po. The same. He feels the same as Benny Kiri. Yawi, Yawi. You're holding tears back right now. What's going through your mind? Four zeros. Di na po kami first round end seat. Ngayon kami na po pinakamalakas sa buong mundo. They're not just first round exit now. They're the strongest team in the world. I have to hear from the youngest one, Sanji Sanford. 
uh, para sa akin. Uh, nagbunga po lahat ng pag-aarap ko, ay ng mga pag ko, tsaka mga sacrifices. Uh, para sa papa ko talaga to. This is for his father. All the hard work has finally paid off. Sanji. Um, sobrang saya kasi ano eh. First time ko lang mag-worlds, tapos ito agad kinalabasan. It's his first world. And now, this is the result. One more time, everybody. Give it up for your M4 World Champion, Echo! They're really doing a great job here. Pinas Lang Malangkas. And for everybody watching online, MLBB has prepared an Easter egg for you to celebrate this wonderful moment. Enter M4 in the chat box and you'll get the M4 champion seal. Collect the seals and exchange them for the M4 final avatar border. Hashtag Mobile Legends Bang Bang. Hashtag MLBB M4. And Dare to be great. And I would also like to thank our sponsors. M4 is powered by Mooton, presented by TikTok, the official content partner, and supported by Secret Lab, the official gaming chair. We have eSports Stars, our analytical partner, and we have Kang, our official merchandise partner. We have Miwas, our media partner, and last but not least, the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy of the Republic of Indonesia. Thank you everybody for giving us your support. It's been such a wonderful journey. Keep supporting Mobile Bang Bang and we'll see you in the Philippines for the next world stage. This is Mobile Legends Bang Bang and for World Championship. Dare to be great!